Maybe. Okay. You know, needless to say, we're very disappointed. Uh, thought we were in it at 20 to 17. And knew we had to kind of match it if we weren't playing well defensively. All the wheels came off. And, uh, you know, you look at the tape and there's a lot of good things that we can grow from. I think we played a very, very good football team. I think it's a team that will challenge for the Mountain West Championship. We don't make excuses, so we came back yesterday. We told our kids we learn from it. We're going to grow, and we're going to play another one. It's coming up very quickly. We leave town in two days, so we had to practice yesterday, which we don't like to do, and going hard again today, which is uh, a day when we normally get the legs back and that kind of thing. We have no time, no time to wait. We have to get ready to go for the next one. Coach, is, is Nevada's offense that good, or was this their mistakes made on? on your defensive front. Well, you know, it's always a game where football is, college football is such, Robert, that um, the team that makes the least mistakes is going to win. And it's, it's that way at any level. Any NFL football, same way. Um, it, it's, a, it's an offense that's very difficult to, to defend, especially if that quarterback can run, because you have to assign 11 for 11, and one guy misses. You have to play assignment football, and one guy misses, and, and you're in trouble. And we maybe paid a little bit too much attention to the full, to the quarterback, but he was off the good runner as well. And not having Moses in there, you know, Moses hurt us a lot because because we can't replace Moses with a Moses too, like other teams can. So, but there's no excuses. It is a nice offense. Um, it's something that they they perfected. They've worked at it. I'm very familiar with it because I spent time with Chris in my previous job trying to learn much as I could about it. And it didn't all happen at once. It's been nine or ten years in the making, and they do a good job with it. But, uh, you know, we still should have been able to stop a little bit more than we did. What's it like on the sideline in a game like that, particularly in the second half when it was just kind of piling on, perfect storm? What is it like on the sideline there for you and the players? It's hard. It's hard. <clears throat> we kept encouraging them to play, which I think they did. Um, but it's not easy. This is a tough business. The problem with this business is see this way, this way, there's no in between. And our guys were hurting pretty good. Our guys were hurting and we, we couldn't stop them, but we kept encouraging them and then they kept playing hard. I kept telling myself, we're going to have our day, our day's going to come, but it wasn't that night. This is a tough stretch for your football team. I mean, short week, you have back to back road game, not just the one game. That's a lot, it's a lot to overcome here. It sure is. And, um, uh, you know, we knew what we were getting into, I guess, when, uh, you know, the Mountain West is a whole different deal than what's happened here before. Uh, it's a rough, rough schedule. Like you said, it, you, you're exactly right. This next team we're coming up is a sturdy bunch now. They're tough, hard-nosed guys. You know, the, you know, we all know about BYU and the, 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 what they bring to the table. Then we have to fly back to San Diego State. So it is, but, but you know, it is what it is. And, you know, I hate to be football ch uh, coach talk, but it's the truth. We just have to play them. You know, the thing that's important for me, and I told our players, it's, it's, it's going to be about us. Um, it always is about us. How are we going to react to this, this type of adversity? How are we going to react to the tough schedule that we have ahead of us? We'll have to wait and see. I, I, I feel confident our guys will do that. We'll play with confidence, but do we have enough firepower? We'll just have to wait and see. How does that process begin, the, the recovery from a loss like that into preparation for the next week? I mean, is there any... Is it just, it's not fancy, you just have to get to work? Just get to work, game. just get to work. You know, I was telling the guys in, in the NFL, when, when we lose a game on Sunday, on Monday about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the head coach would blow a bullhorn. Whap! Went through the whole office building. And then what he was telling me was, all right, quit pouting and move on to the next one. So we did that yesterday. <clears throat> we met, and I told him, since I'm the oldest guy there, I'm, I'm officially declaring Reno over with. We, they got us. Now let's get ready for BYU. We spent yesterday afternoon getting ready for BYU. Last night as coaches, we just have to do it. I mean, there's no easy way. It, it hurts. It hurts. This is a tough business, and it hurts. And it hurts our players. And I could see the hurt in their eyes when it was all over. But you know, we just we just come back. It's all we can do. I I, I tell them one of my favorite sayings in all of football is, is that adversity reveals character, and we're going to find out the character of our kids real soon. Coach. Bronco is a guy who hangs his head on defense. What do they do a lot of different things. They play. They play very good defense. They're stout. They're sturdy. They help Boise scoreless. Yeah. Boise only scored on a defensive touchdown. Uh, Utah got 24 on them, but got lucky on a couple shots. Uh, 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 
balling over the quarterback's head, that kind of thing. So they're, they're nothing fancy. They play an even front. They bounce around pretty good. Play a lot of zone coverage, but they do it very well. I, uh, uh, they, they, they know what they're getting. They know the type of athlete that they have, and they make very good use of them. You definitely get Joey back this week? Yes. We could have had Joey the other night. Uh, probably at about 80%, but we just felt like it's such a long haul that, and Will was running the ball well. Uh, we, you know, obviously had to get out of our rhythm because of what was going on with the game. Uh, I just saw this morning, Will's averaging 6.3 yards per carry. So we need to feed him the ball. We need to make that game, you know, close that game down, get ourselves in the fourth quarter, which we did not do the other night. Another homecoming for you, Coach, going to BYU. I know you're focusing game first, but you, know, you and Lavelle were together for quite a while, and his name's on that stadium. What did he mean to you? What was it like with him and that relationship and your time there? Well, you know, it, it's a lot, a lot has gone on since then. This is the fourth team I'm going back with, so it really that part doesn't mean much. Lavelle's a, a guy that, that did a, that, uh, you know, really made a mark in Provo. I was fortunate to be with him for a lot of years, but not only Lavelle, but he had some other coaches that were terrific that I got the chance to learn from. Uh, Lavelle is obviously very special. He gave me a chance. I was a graduate assistant when he offered me a full-time job. <clears throat> you know, f f children raised there, all that kind of stuff. But it's not that that part is over with now. I, I know very few people there that you know. I was of a different era, if you will, um, different AD, different presidents, and the whole bit. Uh, it's just a game that we have to get back on track with. It's about our players. How they? How, I mean, it's a very hostile environment. You, know, you guys have been there. It's a beautiful place to play. Loud. We're going to have to work on some, some uh, silent counts and all that kind of thing. It's, it's about them. It's not it's nothing to do with me. <clears throat> Coach, uh, what role are team captains going to play to boost team morale? Well, I just felt like we, you know, uh, you, you're probably referring to the two new captains that we, we just felt like we needed, you know, more, not more, but, but a, a, a better group effort as far as uh, the entire team. You know, Maya is, is not a vocal guy by, by, by personality, and we never want him to act out of his na of personality. But Sean is, and Mike is, so we just felt like it would help us come even closer together than we are. How much do you concern yourself with the, some of the drops offensively, drop passes in that game, and how do you shore that up? Well, you know, just keep working. I mean, they're not they're not out there trying to drop a pass. That that's what makes it tough. You know, Maya had a tough day. We were talking, Derek and I were talking about coming over here. You know, he. He turns once on a first down and, and falls. He was just having a tough time, but you know, you can't keep going on it. I mean, just move on and keep practicing. You know, throw him on. I told him he needs to be on that jug machine, 100 balls after practice every day. We just need to get better. But but you can't fault the young guys. I mean, they're not, oh, I'm going to drop this pass. You know, they, they feel as bad as anybody. <clears throat>